Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial regarding high voltage power supplies of Isaac Spital Electronic GmbH. My name is Stefan Jok and I am one of the sales engineers at Isaac. Today I would like to introduce to you the units of NHS series. NHS are a NIM based single slot 6 channel high voltage power supply. These are available in a standard and a high precision version. Depending on the application, there are different output voltage, output current configurations available. Standard regarding the polarity of the output voltage is all channels positive or all channels negative, but there are also mixed systems possible. The units can be controlled via front panel, USB interface or via a controller area network interface or short CAN interface. Ok, now that I told you the main features, let's switch it on. For that the unit has to be placed in the NIM crate of course. Please take care that the 24V line of the NIM crate has to be quite powerful. If you place several NHS inside of one NIM crate but the power supply is not able to provide enough current there will be malfunctions. Let's take a look at the front panel. From top to bottom you will find the type number, two control buttons which I will explain later, the display showing values for all of the six channels, a rotary knob which is also a button, status LEDs and on off button for each of the six channels, two potentiometers labeled with Vmax and Imax with which you can limit either the output voltage or the output current for all of the six channels. You will find the USB connector and next to it a connector for the safety loop. Below that you have the connection points for the controller area network and below that you have an inhibit connector. For the explanation of the front panel control I will zoom in a bit so you can better see the display. The display shows you information about all of the six channels. One channel is always highlighted, in this case it's the lowest one. If you turn the rotary knob you can select a specific channel. With a short push on the rotary knob you get to the settings window of the selected channel. With another short push you select the value you want to change, in this case the output voltage. And with a third short push you select the digit you want to change of that value. To save the values you have just set you have to do a long push on the rotary knob. Of course the same is also possible for the settings of the output current of the selected channel. The overview window of the selected channel also tells you which values you are seeing, setting values or measurement values, indicated here with the red set. With the right one of the two control buttons you can switch display between showing measurement values and setting values. As you can see now the measurement values are zero because the channel is switched off. If we switch it on you can see that it's ramping up to the values we have just set before. Due to I have not attached any load, the output current is shown as zero. If you now again push the rotary button, the unit will switch back to the settings value and you can adjust the settings of the output value. As you can see the value for the output current is not exactly zero and also the output voltage has a slight deviation to the setting value. This is because I just had recently started the module and it's still warming up. After a use of approximately 30 minutes the values will be much more precise. If you push the on off button of the channel again the unit will ramp down. As you can see the LED HV on will stay lit until the output current reaches a value lower than 50 volt. By pushing the left of the two control buttons you get back to the channel overview and by pushing it again you are getting to the device settings. It is a bit hard to see in this video but here you will find the entries control, setup, hardware limits, supply, temperature and info. If you push the rotary knob while the highlighted bar is on the entry control you will enter the control settings. Here you can find the entries for voltage ramp, current ramp, clear all events and set kill enable. 
In the menu for voltage ramp you can define how fast the channel shall ramp up or down after the on off button was switched. The value for voltage ramp is given in percent of the maximum output voltage of the specific module. In this case it would be percent of 6000 volt. Again with a short push on the rotary knob you change the digit of the value and with a long one you accept. The next entry is the current ramp which is defining the speed of current ramping. This is only valid if the unit is in current control mode. Same here, short push is changing the digit, a long push is accepting the value. The next entry, clear all events, is used to erase the status signals which the unit gives out in case of specific events, for example if a current threshold is reached. And the last entry in control is set kill enable. Kill enable is defining the behavior of the unit in case a current threshold is reached. If kill enable is set, the unit will shut down. If kill enable is not set, the output current will be limited. With a push of the back button, the left one of the two control buttons, you always get back to the previous menu. In this case, the device menu. The next entry in the device menu is setup. Here you will find the entries measurement setup, communication, display, reset set values and factory reset. Under measurement setup you can change the values for the ADC sample rate and the digital filter. Depending on your application you can here adjust those values to better fit your needs. Details regarding that can be found in the manual. The next entry in module setup is communication. Here you can change the values for the CAN bitrate and the CAN address. For the CAN bitrate you have the choice between 125 kilobit per second or 250 kilobit per second. For the CAN address you can choose a value between 0 and 63. It is necessary to change the CAN address in case you have several modules on the same CAN line. If you do have several modules with the same CAN address on the same CAN line, there will be malfunctions. The next entry in module setup is display. Here you can define the time frame after your last input action until the display is switched off. You can also deactivate the function to switch off the display by setting the value to zero. Going back to the module setup by pushing the back button twice and you can select the entry reset set values. If you choose yes here, all of the setting values for output voltage and output current will be reset to zero. And the last entry in module setup is factory reset. If you choose here, you basically reset all changeable settings to the standard value. Back in the device menu, the third entry is hardware limits. Here you can read out the values which you set via the potentiometers on the front panel labeled with Vmax and Imax. In supply temperature you can check if the input voltages and the board temperature are ok. And finally in info you can find information about the specific module like the device number, serial number, firmware version and the nominals for output voltage and current. Let's take a closer look on the lower part of the front panel. Again, here you can see the potentiometers for the hardware limits labeled with Vmax and Imax, the USB connector, the safety loop connector, the two connection points for the CAN bus and the inhibit connector. If the safety loop is activated, there will only be output voltages if a current between 5 mA and 20 mA is present at the safety loop connector. The safety loop is activated by removing a small jumper at the bottom of the module. Details regarding that can be found in the manual. The metal tube you can see on the right one of the current connection points is actually one of the termination resistors. For flawless operation of the CAN bus it is necessary to terminate both ends of the line with a 120 ohm resistor. If you want to connect two or more NHS to the same CAN line there are linking cables available from Isaac, shown here. You have to connect this linking cable to the free CAN connector and the other one to one of the connection points of the other module. To connect the modules via CAN bus to a computer, you need a special adapter cable 
which is part of the shipment. This adapter is then connected to the CAN interface you are using. The control via USB interface or CAN interface will be explained in a different video. Many thanks for watching this short video tutorial. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact us via any of the means given on our website www.isaac-hv.com. Thank you and bye bye.